Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the complete guide to every single Mythic Plus dungeon in Season 1 of The War Within. We'll be going through all the important boss and trash mechanics that you need to know. A lot of effort went into creating this video, so if you like it, please consider sharing, commenting and pressing the buttons below. Without further ado, let's dive straight in. At the start of the dungeon, be very careful with the Dirt Spite Claws, which are going to jump at people and leave a stacking bleed on them. They also have a buff that makes them increase the damage that players take by 10% for 20 seconds when they die, which is also stacking. But if you have a way to purge it, you only have to deal with the bleeds. The big guys have a channel that you have to heal through, and they also have a huge frontal, make sure to dodge it. The Harvesters will be casting Spirit Bolts, interrupt as many of these as you can, but always save an interrupt for their big cast, Harvest Essence, which not only does heavy AoE to everybody in your party, but it also heals them. The Soul Cleavers will put a stacking debuff on your tank that increases their damage taken, simply dispel that, and don't forget to pick up a Green Mushroom from the side room, which increases your primary stat. The Drust Breakers are going to keep spawning Bamboo Bursts on your feet, move away to avoid taking damage, and prepare a defensive for their Furious Trashing, which is a 6 second channel doing heavy AoE damage to everybody in your party. You have to kill two of these at the same time in order to unlock the first boss of the dungeon. Ingram Malok is going to keep casting Spirit Bolts, interrupt as many of these as you can, and Droman has a big frontal that you need to keep dodging. Occasionally he's going to cast Force Compliance, which is a burst of blue swirlies on the ground that also leave puddles behind, so consider moving the boss away. Repulsive Visage is an AoE fear that you cannot stop, so if you don't have ways to break fear, make sure you stay away from the blue puddles. When Malo casts Embrace Darkness, he starts taking 80% reduced damage, and at the same time players have a dot on them, which is only removed when the big guy Droman reaches 20% health. At this point, he stuns Mawok for 15 seconds and during this time he takes 200% increased damage. So generally you wanna focus the big guy and save your cooldowns for this burn phase. Rinse and repeat until Mawok dies. After you kill the boss, don't forget to click on the seat to update the respawn point in the dungeon. And then you have to do the maze. Each room in the maze has four pillars, when you stay next to them you reveal a special symbol that looks like this. Each symbol has three main characteristics, they're either a flower or a leaf, they either have a circle or they don't, and they're either filled and solid or they're empty. You have to figure out which symbol has one of these three features as unique, meaning that it doesn't repeat in the other three symbols, and that will be the door that you have to go through. As for the mobs in the maze, the defenders are going to cast Expel, charging to a player doing a bunch of damage and knocking them back. And they're also going to cast Mist Ward, they leave a big blue swirly on the ground, that denies a large portion of the area where you have to fight them, so you have to navigate your way around. The stalkers are going to cast Mist Veil Bite, which leaves a nasty bleed on your targets. The tenders have a Norge the Forest cast that you need to interrupt as this is an AoE heal. You also have to interrupt the Shaper's Bramble Thorn Cold cast, which puts shields on them and roots everybody in your party doing AoE damage. And the Stingers will charge players and leave a nasty dot on them that you have to dispel, otherwise they're going to explode for more AoE damage in a small area circle. In the maze you're also going to fight one of three possible mini bosses. They have pretty standard mechanics, Frontals that you need to dodge, big swirlies on the ground that you need to move out from. And if you get the dragon, make sure to move him out of the big blue circle. The second boss is going to fire arrows to each player, make sure to move to the side to dodge them. The boss is also going to cast party cake, which is going to one shot your tank, and the only one who can interrupt that is the tank himself. Free stack is going to summon an ad that's going to fixate and start chasing players for a few seconds. You can CC it and slow it down, but if you fail to do so, make sure to run away because if it catches you, you'll most certainly die. When the boss casts guessing game, you go into phase 2 where the boss himself is immune to damage. Instead, four illusionary clones spawn with the same symbols that you saw in the maze. You have to quickly figure out which one has the unique treat and kill it as fast as possible to get back to phase 1. 
as the rest of the mechanics keep happening, but now everybody in your party is taking heavy AoE damage. Rinse and repeat until you kill the boss, and once you jump down the waterfall, don't forget to click the next seat to update the spawn point in the dungeon. The next area features gorgers, which are going to throw acid globules on the ground. Big green circles that not only do damage, but they can also knock you off of the platform. The acid gullets are going to cast volatile acid, that's a dot on the player that does damage around them as well, so spread out and use your defensives. And then the reavers are going to charge players and leave yet another poison debuff that you have to deal with if you have no way to dispel it. Some of the packs also have stack horns, make sure to interrupt their stimulate resistance which puts shields on the mobs around them, or their stimulate regeneration which heals them. They're also going to cast Acid Nova, nothing that you can do about that, you just have to heal through the debuffs that they put on people. After you navigate through that last area, you'll be at the last boss, Stredova. She's going to cast Acid Expulsion, green swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge and stay out of as they leave puddles behind. However, she's going to remember how you dodged the swirly, and next time this mechanic comes up, she's going to try to predict that you're going to move in the same direction and cast extra swirlies on those locations. The longer the fight goes on, the more swirlies you have to deal with. The next mechanic is called Mind Link, she targets one player and connects him to the rest, doing damage to everyone affected, and you have to move 40 yards away in order to break those links and stop the damage. Coalescing poison sucks everyone towards the boss where there's a big green circle that explodes for a ton of damage, so you want to make sure you're not in sight when that happens. She's also going to cast Accelerated Incubation, she summons 4 little adds that fixate a player, you want to run to your tank, slow them down, CC them and cleave them down if you're the one that they fixate, and keep in mind that upon dying they explode and leave more green puddles on the ground. And if that's not enough mechanics for you, at 70 and 40% Tredova starts casting consumption. Heavy AoE damage to the whole party for 14 seconds while you have to dodge big white swirlies on the ground. And you can interrupt the cast, but only after you break the anima absorption shield that she casts on herself. All the mansion mechanics will keep overlapping with each other if she's not casting consumption. And if you manage to navigate your way through them and kill the boss, you also complete the dungeon. At the start of the dungeon, you're gonna be fighting blightbacks that explode for a bunch of damage when they die, and they also leave a nasty dot to everybody in your party, so be very careful if you pull a lot of these on top of other packs. You can pick up spears throughout the dungeon, if you throw them at the enemies, they're gonna take increased damage for a few seconds, so make a good use of those, and save an interrupt for the drain fluids cast by the corpse harvesters, as this turns into a channel that does a ton of damage to its target. The first boss is Blightbone, he's going to target a random player, turn towards them and cast a having wretched Fronto. The target might want to pop a defensive and bait it opposite to the direction that you're going to. The hit summons 3 little adds that you need to slow down CC and cleave down as quickly as possible, and you want to keep them away from your group for several reasons. First, they melee very hard and each subsequent hit is harder than the previous one. If they successfully melee 5 times in a row, they erupt and put a long dot to everybody in your party, which is technically going to wipe you, as it's not dispellable. And lastly, once they die, they leave a big green puddle behind, which is going to stay there until the end of the fight, so you have to keep moving the boss around, and if you want to beat it, you have to manage the adds correctly the whole time. The trash that follows includes sorcerers, interrupt as many of the necrotic bolts as you can, and watch for their shadow well, which drops a big black puddle on the ground, which is going to kill you if you remain in sight. The necromancers are also going to cast necrotic bolts, but they're also going to summon a bunch of skeletons around, but they all die once you kill the necromancer, so you should ignore the adds and focus on the main guy, unless the skeletons are mages, in this case you should spare certain interrupts as they're gonna spam frostbolts, and also they're gonna cast frostbolt volley which does huge AoE damage to everybody in your group, so it's very important to throw a few interrupts towards them while you're killing the necromancer. In this area there's also a few animal orbs, if you pick them up you can use them to do a bunch of damage to your enemies, and it's also going to silence them for a little bit, so it's very useful for big pulls. The bone menders in the area are going to try to cast final bargain that you need to stun, 
that's a huge heal that also puts a big dot on them, but you still don't want to make it go off as you don't want to wait for the dot to kill them, then interrupt their bone mans, which is another type of a heal effect. There's also a mini boss here that you want to skip because you have to fight it with a bunch of other casters. But if you do pull it, there's going to be plenty of necrotic boss to interrupt. You have to dispel the boss's dark shroud because it makes him immune to physical attacks and it also starts doing pull sick damage to everyone around it. Its dead burst spawns a lot of balls that explode around it so you have to dodge them. And he's also going to mark a player with his grim fate ability, basically making them a bomb that explodes in a few seconds. Of course, doing AoE damage on top of the player taking even more. This area also includes some skeletal marauders that cleave, so make sure to stay behind them. They also cast 8 second absorb shields on themselves. You want to break through those as quickly as possible, as if you succeed, you do a ton of damage to themselves. And make sure to interrupt their rasping scream, as this is AoE fear. The second boss, Amart, is still going to cast Necrotic Bolts, interrupt as many of these as you can and also purge the boss once he casts the Frenzy to himself. Once he casts Land of the Dead, he's going to summon Skeletal adds the same adds that we've seen with the Necromancers. Couple of them are mages, so you have to interrupt them and cleave all of them down as quickly as possible before the boss casts Final Harvest, which is going to make every add that's alive explode for a bunch of damage, potentially wiping you. And in this phase, you also have to dodge the Necrotic Breath, which is a frontal that the boss circles around. After you kill that boss, you have to go up into the Necropolis and kill all the trash there. Some packs are going to have a Flesh Crafter with a loyal creation. The second one is going to do a big circle that you need to get out of, and the Flesh Crafter is going to try to cast Repair Flesh to heal the big mob. Simply interrupt that and be prepared for when they cast Throw Cleaver. They're gonna mark a player with a red arrow and you have 4 seconds to put the loyal creation between you and the flesh crafter. So it takes the hit and the damage instead, otherwise you're just going to die. If the loyal creation is not there, you can also use your tank to soak the hit instead. The corpse collectors are going to try and cast gore splatter which you need to interrupt, otherwise your whole party is going to take huge AoE damage. And they're also going to try and cast the Drain Fluids, which turns into a channel that does a ton of damage and incapacitates the target, so make sure to spare interrupt for that as well. Some of the packs also have the big Kyrian Stitchworks, which are going to put a debuff on your tank, which is stacking and increases the damage they take. So be very careful when you pull those and try to burst them down quickly so your tank does not get into much trouble. Once you clear all the trash on the floor, you start a small gauntlet that starts with two assistants. They have the drain fluids mechanic that you need to interrupt and they're also going to throw cleaver at people, which is the same red arrow that you need to aim and somebody needs to soak. If you get that mechanic, make sure to aim it to the other assistant so they take the damage, but at the very least it should be your tank. They have one new mechanic, morbid fixation. Once they cast that, they start chasing someone in your group. Make sure to keep your distance and run away because if they catch you, you die. After you kill them, you have to fight two mini bosses. The first one is called Gore Grind. It puts the same damage increase stacking debuff on your tank. And it's also going to cast Gut Slice. This is a huge frontal that you need to dodge because it not only does damage, but it leaves a nasty bleed on you, which is most certainly going to kill you. The second mini boss is Rod Spew. He's going to spit on people. The target takes a bunch of damage and leaves a big green puddle on the ground that you need to avoid. He also has an 8 yard aura around him that does taking damage, so if you can, keep your distance away from him to avoid taking damage. After you kill the mini bosses, you start the third boss, Stitch Flash, who is initially immune to damage. He's going to throw green puddles on the ground that you need to dodge and he's going to put bleeds on people that you need to heal through. At the same time, big creation is spawned that does sticking damage to everyone in your party while it's alive. And occasionally it's going to target somebody in your party and throw a meat hook on them. This is indicated by a big red arrow that you need to aim to the platform where the boss is standing. Once the cast starts, move to the side and the hook is going to grip the boss and bring him down, removing his immunity to damage. You can focus the boss now, but be aware of your positioning as you want to keep the boss between you and the big creation which should still be alive. The reason is, it's still going to cast the meat hook and you want the boss to soak that hook as he's going to do the morbid fixation mechanic, chasing somebody and killing them if he catches them. 
However, if you land the meat hook on the boss, it negates that mechanic. At some point, the boss is going to jump back on the platform and become immune to damage again, but it also summons another creation so you can repeat the whole phase all over again. Once you kill him, you take a portal to the top of the necropolis where the last boss awaits. He's going to cast Frozen Binds to a player, which immobilizes them and needs to be dispelled, but before you do that, you have to make sure nobody else is standing into the big circle around them, as if they do, the effect is just going to transfer on them and being immobilized is going to kill you during Comet Storm, which is a big swirlies that you need to keep dodging on the ground. He's also going to put a shield on himself that you need to burst through because while the shield is holding, it does pulsing and increasing every damage to everybody in the party. And the last mechanic is called Dark Exile. He's going to send a DPS player to a side platform where they have to dodge a bunch of swirlies and kill and interrupt an ad in the next 50 seconds, otherwise they're simply going to die. If they succeed, they get a buff and they're flown back to the platform, but on landing they drop a big ice area denial circle, so you want to quickly move to the edge of the platform after you land in order to drop it there. Rinse and repeat until you kill the boss, In the first area, you're going to meet the Iron Tight Raiders, which are going to hook you in and do a wee damage around them, and then cast their Savage Tempest, which is a whirlwind around them, so you need to run out and keep your distance. Interrupt the blackish bolts of the Wave Shapers, but make sure to always save an interrupt for their Water Shield. It greatly reduces the damage they take and explodes for a wee damage once it expires. The Bombers are going to throw bombs around and leave fire patches on the ground, just move away from those. And be careful of the enforcers who are going to cast frontals every now and then. The packs here also have gutters which are going to smack your tank and reduce their haste, stacking, as well as some shredders which are going to jump around randomly and backstab people. The first boss is Chopper Red Hook, he's going to fixate on players and start chasing them. If he catches you, you die. So if you're on the hook, make sure to run away and try to lure the boss on top of the bombs that fall from the sky on random locations. They damage and stun the boss, making him take increased damage for 10 seconds. Keep in mind that the bombs have a timer and if they're about to expire, preferably your tank needs to run on top of them and detonate them. They will take some damage, but that's better than letting the bomb explode, which is going to do damage to everybody in your party. The boss is occasionally going to hook everybody towards him doing AoE damage and then casting a big swirly that you need to run away from. And throughout the fight, ads are gonna keep spawning, some of them are going to be power shots doing damage to random targets, and the other type is cleavers who have a huge frontal line that you need to keep dodging. Cleave down the ads, don't let them overwhelm you and keep kiting the boss into the bombs until he dies. The next area has some curse blades which are going to apply a stacking curse on your tank, increasing the damage they take. Having a curse dispel here to help them is quite useful. Be very careful with the Ashvane commanders and their bolstering shout. If you don't interrupt that and it goes off, all the mobs around them are going to take 75% less damage for 8 seconds. And they're also going to cast Trample, they mark a target and charge towards them doing damage in the small impact area, also stunning everybody on the way, so make sure you move to the side. After a few packs, make sure to hide behind the barrels as the mobs ahead are going to start an artillery, and you need to wait for the windows when they're not shooting to run ahead and engage in combat. These packs have spotters which are going to shoot bombs from the sky in a small circular area that you need to avoid. The pool before the second boss includes some deckhands that are going to put yet another debuff on your tank that increases the damage they take, and the cannoneers are going to fire a huge frontal that you need to dodge, along with all the other mechanics from the mobs in this pool. Captain Lockloot is the next boss, she's going to randomly jump around, shoot at people and every now and then she's also going to fire fiery ricochet. This is a shot that bounces to two additional players and leaves dots on them. You should stay behind her as she has a frontal that she aims at the tank. And she's also going to go for mass bombardment, spawning circles at the feet of your teammates that you need to keep dodging. At 66 and 33% she becomes immune to damage and jumps back to her ship. A set of odd spawns, two deckhands and one cannoneer, dodge the cannoneer frontal and kill the adds as you're constantly going to get bombarded from the ship, and you have to keep moving around and finding safe areas. 
or don't. Anyways, once you kill the cannoneer, he drops a cannon that you need to pick up and shoot at the boss to bring her back to the platform. Once you do that, phase 1 continues with the same mechanics that we mentioned previously. After you kill the boss, you have to hide behind the barrels again until you manage to scare off the snipers that are gonna be shooting at you and get to the next area where you're gonna be fighting some pillagers, make sure to interrupt their stinky vomit and try to stun the banana rampage from the buccaneers as it does AoE damage and shoots around banana peels that stun people if they walk on top of them. Also be careful when they cast going bananas as this is a whirlwind doing AoE damage in small area around them. The Tempest mobs are going to cast water bolts, interrupt as many of these as you can, but definitely save an interrupt for their choking waters cast. This one not only does damage, but also silences the target, so you definitely don't want it to go off. The big demolishers are going to cast terrifying roar, fearing everybody in a short range, so make sure you stay out. And they're also going to cast the uninterruptible crushing slam, which does damage to everybody in your party. The packs just before the third boss have a couple of new mobs introduced. The destroyers are going to cast ferocity, buffing their own haste. While the invaders stack a poison on your tank, which could be problematic if you don't have a dispel for it. These packs feature mobs from all the other parts of the dungeon and once you kill them, you can fight the third boss. Hadao is going to cast Breakwater, which summons Swirlies at the feet of few players. You wanna bait those away from the center statue. In a few seconds, they explode doing AoE damage and leave patches on the ground that you need to avoid. The boss also has a frontal that should be aimed away from the party and the center. And at 100 energy, he summons Tidal Surge. Two subsequent waves come from random directions from the sides of the room and you need to use the statue in the middle to avoid them. That would be the reason that you want to keep the area around it clean. And that's pretty much it. All these mechanics keep repeating until you manage to kill the boss. There is no thrash that follows. You run down a platform avoiding some swirlies and you're at the last boss. Or whatever that thing is. You start the fight on platform number one, there is a demolishing terror there and your tank needs to stay in melee, otherwise this thing goes bananas and kills everybody. Occasionally the boss is going to throw a whole bunch of swirlies in the fighting platform, so make sure you dodge those. And the tentacle is going to cast slam, which does AoE damage and knocks everybody back, so be prepared for that. The worst mechanic is called putrid waters, the boss puts two debuffs on two random players which do a bunch of upfront damage and leave a nasty dot on the targets. You should dispel one of them as quickly as possible and then spam heals to the second one, praying that they live. After you kill the big tentacle, you are allowed to use the cannon, but in order to do that, you have to kill the small tentacle and free the engineer that is going to fix it. Once that happens, somebody goes into the cannon, presses a button, you do a third of the boss's health in damage, and then you move to the next platform on the site. Everything here repeats, kill the big tentacle, kill the small tentacle, fire the weapon, go to the third platform, do all of the things again, and then you basically kill the boss. At the start of the dungeon, you're gonna fight some earth callers that are going to cast earth bolts, interrupt as many of these as you can, but make sure to save an interrupt for their mass tremor, as it does heavy AoE damage to everybody in your party while the earth bolts are single target. The Brutes are going to slap your tank and cast Obsidian Stomp, which is swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge. And when the big destroyer Drake casts Umbra Went, you're going to get pushed back, so make sure your back is towards the wall and not towards the Abyss in the middle, as you die if you get pushed there. He's also going to cast Twilight Flame, random dot on a target that not only does damage, but also leaves puddles behind. So make sure to move to the side if you get this. Some of the packs also have Overseers, that are going to put a stacking debuff on your tank, increasing the damage they take. And they're also going to cast Reckless Tactic that increases the damage that they do, but also the damage they take. This affects all the mobs around them, and it's up to you to decide whether or not you wanna purge it. After a few pulls, you get to mount a Drake and bomb the remaining trash before the first boss. You have two abilities, your one ability does a lot of damage but only has five charges, while the two ability you can spam indefinitely, but it does much less damage. You do only one lap of the area, so do as much damage as you can because you have to kill the remaining trash after you land. The first boss is General Umbres, he's going to cast Commanding Roar, doing a little bit of AoE damage and summoning drakes that are going to bombard the area. Make sure to move to the non-purple area in order not to get one-shotted. 
Rock Spike puts circles around the players that explode, so make sure to spread out and try to drop the puddles from them towards the edge of the room because they will remain there for the remainder of the fight. The boss also has a tank buster that leaves a bleed on them and these mechanics keep repeating until you manage to kill it. The next area features some Molten Giants which are going to cast Molten Wake, heavy AoE damage to everybody in your party with a debuff that increases the fire damage taken, which means that you should not get hit by the fire swirlies that are going to fire from the middle of the room. The Peculiars are going to cast Shadow Flame Bolt and Seer Mind, try to interrupt both, the first one does single target damage while Seer Mind stuns the target as well, so it should have higher priority in your interrupt list. The Flame Renders are going to leave a stacking dot on your tank and they're also going to cast a huge frontal called Blazing Shadow. If you don't CC them to interrupt that, it leaves a huge fiery area on the ground that you need to avoid. The second boss is Forge Master Trongus, who's going to use different weapons throughout the fight. Every time he forges a new weapon, the whole party takes AoE damage for 4 seconds, so be prepared to use defensives at that point. First he's going to forge an axe, which allows him to cast a huge front throw to one of the players in your party. You wanna bait that towards the edges of the arena, as it leaves a huge area denial after it casts, which remains there until the end of the fight. After a little bit more AoE, he forges swords, which allows him to cast Molten Flurry. This smacks your tank and puts Molten Spark to the rest of the players, which is a ticking dot that leaves puddles behind after it expires, and they also remain there until the end of the fight, so you wanna drop them close to the edges as well. After he forges the maze, he gets big and enraged. For 10 seconds, at this point your tank needs to kite him, and he's gonna leave Fire Trail behind, which is another area denial, so you need to manage your space very carefully during this fight. After the mace expires, he forges the axe again and everything repeats until you manage to kill him. The next area introduces Lava Benders, which have a huge frontal that you need to dodge, as it also stuns apart from doing damage. They're also going to cast Dark Eruption, which does AoE damage to everybody in your party and puts fiery circles around some of the players, which explode for additional damage so you need to spread out. They're also going to channel Ascension, pulsing AoE damage to everybody in your party and doing even more in a small area around them. This area also features Twilight Warlocks that are going to cast Enveloping Shadow. This is a curse that does taking damage and also puts a healing absorb shield on the target, so if you cannot dispel it, you have to heal through it. In order to get to the next boss, you have to kill several packs, which feature a mix of many of the mobs that we have already seen in the dungeon. The third boss is Draga Shadow Burner, who is going to cast Shadow Flame Bolts in phase 1, interrupt those as much as you can. She's also going to summon portals that explode for a bit of AoE damage and summon an ad that fixates a player. You can CC, slow down and cleave the ad, but you have to make sure that it doesn't reach its target, otherwise it's going to just wipe you. She's also going to cast Curse of Entropy to three different players, doing some upfront damage and leaving a healing absorb shield on them, that you can either dispel or heal through. At 1% health, she transforms into a dragon and phase 2 starts. All the mechanics so far will keep happening, but now she's going to summon two portals and you're going to have two adds fixating the players that you need to cleave down. There's two new mechanics, Twilight Buffet knocks everybody back doing damage and leaving swirlies behind. You want to drop these close to the edge so you have more space to kite the adds. The other new mechanic is a huge frontal that you need to dodge. And all of that continues until the dragon reaches 50% health, which is when the fight ends and you win. The last area introduces a new type of trash mob, Faceless Corruptor. He's going to do a channel called Corrupt. It does a ton of damage, so be ready to use a defensive if you're the target. And these mobs are also going to cast Mind Piercer, which is a bunch of swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge. The last boss is Aerodax, he's going to cast Voice Surge, pushing you back, doing heavy AoE shadow damage to everybody in your party and summoning tentacles on the ground. Make sure not to walk on top of them because you're going to get stunned and this is probably going to kill you for the next mechanic called Shadow Gale. He converges the shadows around him, collapsing everything into a small circle that you need to stay inside. And at the same time he's going to cast a boost of Corruption, which marks three players with shadow circles, forcing you to spread out in the small area that remains from the map. He also has a tank buster and a void infusion cast that summons whelps from the nearby eggs. When you kill those adds, they leave a stacking debuff on you, increasing the shadow damage that you take for 15 seconds, 
so you wanna stagger killing them for after the Void Surge finishes casting so you don't take increased shadow damage from it. Rinse and repeat until you kill the boss and successfully finish Green Batal. At the start you're going to fight few ritualists that are going to cast Tormenting Ray. This is a channel that does sticking damage to a couple of targets that you need to heal through. Their other ability is called Stygian Seed, they're going to mark a player with a magic debuff, once it expires it blows up and does damage in big purple circle around them, so make sure to move out quickly if you get this. If you don't interrupt the shadow mage and snaring shadows cast, a player is going to get a ticking curse on them, so make sure to save your interrupts for that spell and any spare ones you can send to their night bolts. Once you get on board of the ship, you're gonna fight a nightfall commander, make sure to interrupt their abuse or hull. It does AoE damage and puts huge absorb shields to the mobs around him so you don't want it to go off. He's also going to put a stacking bleed on your tank. Once you clear the deck you have to fly to two nearby ships and clear them as well. The new mob that's introduced here is a big spider just interrupt their web bolts and when they cast bursting cocoon a player gets marked with a big circle run out to explode without hitting your teammates. Once you clear the two side ships you fly back to the main deck where the first boss awaits. He's gonna cast a bunch of shadow bolts, simply interrupt those and when he casts obsidian beam, three beams spawn from him and start rotating around him. Keep moving and make sure you're not going to get hit. The next mechanic is called burning shadow, he's going to put a debuff on a player that does taking damage and on expiration or the spell, it puts healing absorb shields to your teammates that you have to heal through. When she casts Collapsing Knight, she's going to open two portals at the feet of two players, make sure to move out quickly so you don't take much damage and try to bait them towards the edge so you have extra space to run away from the beams. When she reaches 50 and 1% health, she's going to cast Darkness Comes. You have to mount up and fly outside of the ship not to get blown up by the big bubble that she casts and you're allowed to do so because of a Radiant Light buff that you get. You don't want to let this expire and you can extend its duration by collecting light orbs that fly around the ship. After the explosion you go back and you continue fighting the boss with the same mechanics. For the next stage you have to fly down in the city and kill three mini bosses that are surrounded by different mobs. Interrupt the dark caster's umbral barrier as that puts absorb shields on them and heals them and their other interruptible cast is Tormenting Beam that turns into a channel and does a ton of single target damage. The manifested shadows are going to drop a lot of swords on the ground that you need to dodge and you want to try and stun their abuse of wrath, if that goes off it puts a dot on a player that you have to heal through. The other new type of mobs here are the Nightfall Tacticians, they're going to keep casting frontals and you're gonna have to keep dodging them. The three mini bosses are spread out through the city, the first one is in the church at the top left, the second one is in a building on the right hand side and the last one is below a bridge at the bottom of the map. The first one, Xkreten, is going to cast Abuso Blast, that's a dot on a player that also stacks if you get targeted twice in a row and Terrifying Slam is a big circle that you need to run out of unless you want to take some damage and get feared. This Coxria is going to cast Shadow Lily K, doing pulsing AoE damage to everyone around, and she's also going to use the Abuso Blast Dot. And the last one is Ikentag, he's going to conjure a big dark orb, which is a frontal that you need to dodge, and of course, use the Abuso Blast Dot as well. Once you kill all the mini bosses, you are allowed to engage the second boss, which is now not empowered. And you have to be careful not to pull him by accident as he's patrolling the city while you're fighting the mini bosses. He's also going to conjure a dark orb, a frontal that you need to dodge, but this one explodes when it meets an obstacle, so you want to bait it into an open location. Terrifying Slam is the same big circle that you need to get out of unless you want to take some damage and get feared. The Shadow Lily Decay is the same AoE from the mini boss that damages everybody in your party and you just have to heal through it and use defensives. And there's one new mechanic which is called Animate Shadows, it summons a bunch of adds that you need to interrupt and CC while you cleave them down as they do significant single target damage. The boss will continue using those four mechanics until you manage to defeat him. After you do that you have to fly back to the ship where a mini boss awaits. Interrupt his night bolts and be aware of his tormenting eruption. 
He's gonna target two players with beams doing a lot of damage to them, but they also need to spread out as the damage splashes around them. He's also constantly going to go for reinforcements summoning weaker versions of the mobs that we've seen throughout the dungeon so far. That also includes all the nasty casters, so make sure to spare some CC while you're cleaving them down. After that mini encounter, the last boss comes, and in phase 1 he's gonna shoot out webs that you need to dodge. He's also going to mark a player with tormenting beam. After a short cast, waves are going to spawn from them in the direction indicated by the green. So make sure to move to the side where you're not gonna hit your friends with it. His erosive spray is a pulsing damage channel which is going to leave a stacking dot on everyone as well, so a good place to use your defensives. And lastly he's going to summon bombs, you have to pick them up, carry it to them and press your extra action button to do some damage to the boss. Failing to do so in time is going to make the bombs explode and do AoE damage to your whole party. At 65% he flies out, you have to mount up and stay close to a small ship that is going to chase him, maintaining your buff allowing you to fly. You can also collect light orbs on the way, they are going to extend the buff's duration. After you land you have to interrupt the boss who is doing AoE damage and is immune until you do so. And in this phase he gets one new mechanic, he's going to mark two players with webs, shortly after they are going to drop puddles that you want to move to the side and quickly get out of. The puddles themselves have quite large radius, but if you hit them with the green waves, you're going to reduce the radius a lot. In this phase there's no bombs, but there's still the erosive spray and the web frontals. And you keep going until the boss reaches 60%, at which point you win. In the first pack you have to deal with invaders and interrupt their arc void, which is basically a chain lightning. And they're also going to put dots on players in the form of curses, so having a curse dispel here is quite nice. The load bots are going to jump at people who move out of the big brown swirlies. And the golems are going to do a huge frontal that you need to dodge, as well as big AoE unavoidable damage to your whole group. The packs also have void souls that are going to cast howling fear, you have to interrupt that as this is AoE fear. The first boss Edna is going to summon spikes around the room and every time you break one of the spikes everybody takes AoE damage and then gets a dot as well which is stacking so you don't want to break way too many at the same time. The next mechanic targets everybody with a frontal designated by a red arrow and if you aim it through a spike it's going to break it but even if you don't you're still going to take some damage. The tank buster puts a debuff on the tank, you have to dispel it in order for them to get some extra damage mitigation. The boss also has energy bar, at 100% he's going to cast Earth Shatter, doing AoE damage and breaking all the spikes that haven't been broken yet. So you have to manage your spikes up to this point in order not to have way too many. After the boss you can go either left or right, on the right hand side there are a few new mobs. The menders are going to cast Alloy Bolt, interrupt those but always save an interrupt for their healing spell called Restoring Metals. And beware of the Forge Warders that have a huge frontal ball that not only does damage but also leaves a dot on you, so make sure not to get hit. There are quite a few packs in this area, as well as an anvil that you get a buff from if you click it, but in order to do so, you have to be Dwarf, Warrior or a Blacksmith. The next boss is a duo of Forge Speakers that do not share health and you have to kill at the same time, otherwise they enrage. You have to constantly interrupt the small guy's molten metal and dodge the big guy who is going to cast the same charged orb frontal that we saw during the trash. At some point the small guy jumps to the side of the arena and charges a box to the middle that you need to dodge so make sure to stay on the sides. You also need a ranged interrupt for his cast after that to get him to join back into melee. His next mechanic is called exhaust vents. There's four machinery vents at the edges of the room and he's going to light up in fire three of them. The ones on fire have flames going out of them as well as big fire swirlies on the ground that you need to stay out of. And there's gonna be one safe vent that doesn't have flames, this is where you wanna position yourself. This is important for the next mechanic for which the big guy is going to jump in the middle. He's going to draw another big box there that explodes in a huge circular area and it sends out big lava waves that you want to dodge, with the vents location being the safe area, as the waves always go around them. Those are all the mechanics, they're gonna keep cycling through them and keep in mind that while the vents are on fire, everybody is taking AoE damage. 
After you kill the boss, you have to go back to the first area. There is a cart that you can take for a quicker travel, only if you clear the trash to it, in order to clear the other wing and the boss there. In here, you're gonna fight some speakers, interrupt their censoring gear cast, as this one does damage but also silences the target. And beware of the big elemental mobs, the howlers are going to cast piercing whale. This one does airway damage but it also increases the damage taken from subsequent casts so make sure to interrupt it. While the despoilers are going to cast void outbursts doing pulsing airway damage to everyone in the party for 6 seconds. You have to clear a few more packs mix of all the mobs we've seen so far in order to get to the next boss. Skarmorak is a nasty piece of business, his crystalline smash is going to summon crystals around the room that do small pulsing AoE damage. You wanna focus and kill them but keep in mind that they explode for a lot of damage once they die, so you don't wanna pop them all at the same time. He's also going to cast unstable crash doing damage around him and summoning black orbs around the room. You wanna soak these as they give you a stacking buff, 50% increased healing and 50% more damage to shields. You need that for his next mechanic, Fortified Shell, which puts a huge shield on him, increased for each crystal that you haven't killed up to this point. And while the shield holds, everybody is taking pulsing AoE damage that is increased for each subsequent tick. This is where soaking the black orbs helps as they give you a stacking buff, but keep in mind that each stack also does sticking damage to you, so you need to find a good balance of how many orbs you wanna soak. After you burst through the shield, he goes back to summoning crystals and everything repeats until you manage to kill him. Back to the main area, a hallway opens leading to the last boss. Some of the new mobs here are honor guards which are going to charge to a location designated by a blue hour, make sure to not stand on the way. The big rock smashers have a frontal that does damage and knocks you back, so make sure to move to the side. And they're also going to summon big brown swirlies on the ground, make sure to dodge those as well. Last but not least, the stone shapers are going to summon totems that you need to focus down and kill before their earth burst goes off. If that happens, everybody takes huge AoE damage and the other thing that you can do is interrupt their stone bolts as they do single target damage. After you clear the packs in the last room, you're at the last boss, Void Speaker Aerich. He's gonna keep casting wide frontal with very long range, so you wanna stay relatively close to make it easier to dodge. The room is going to have two active portals which are going to kill you if you walk on top of them, however when he casts Void Corruption, he puts a dot debuff on everyone that takes for more and more damage. The only way to remove it is walk close to a portal which is going to remove the debuff, consume the portal and open another portal in different location in the room. The rest of the players who still have the debuff need to walk to those portals as quick as possible in order to remove their dots as well. There's one more mechanic, Entrophic Reckoning is going to put circles around everyone, forcing you to spread so you don't blow each other up, and after the circles explode, they leave puddles on the ground that you need to keep dodging. So, dodge the frontals, clear your debuff to a portal as quickly as possible, and drop your puddles to the side. If you manage to do all of that, you're going to kill the boss and finish the dungeon. In the first area, you can click on the green NPCs to get 15% increased damage and healing for 30 seconds to help you fight some of the mobs like the Silk Binders, which are going to cast a lot of web bolts, interrupt as many of those as you can. However, make sure to save an interrupt for their other cast, which is called Silk Binding, and it turns into a channel that does a lot of damage to the target and eventually stuns them. At the same time, the Venom Blades are going to put a stacking poison debuff on your tank, having a dispel here is very helpful. The big swarm guards have a cast that you cannot interrupt, it puts a debuff on everybody in your party and you'll be taking ticking damage for 6 seconds and the other thing you have to be careful about is their frontal that you need to dodge. This area also has big herald mobs that are going to put a debuff called shadow of doubt on a player, surrounding them with 5 orbs and making them take ticking damage. Upon expiration or when you dispel that, the orbs fly out and if anyone gets hit, they take more damage and get another ticking damage debuff that you cannot dispel. They also have twisted thoughts cast that you need to interrupt. If this one succeeds, it does a bunch of damage to the target and leaves a puddle on the ground that you need to keep avoiding. The first boss orator Crix has a force field around him, a big circle. If you go out, you're sucked back in and you take a bunch of damage. 
His tank buster hits pretty hard and he also has a frontal that you have to dodge while still standing in the circle around him. He's also going to cast Shadow of Doubt, the same skill that we already saw, but this time there are two debuffs that go out to two random players. You wanna dispel one, dodge the balls and let the other one expire, firing five more balls that you need to dodge while still standing in the circle. At 100 energy he does a 4 second channel doing AoE damage to everyone in your party and then he drops a big puddle on the ground that you need to move out from. These puddles will stay there for the remainder of the fight so make sure you manage your space correctly and all of that keeps repeating until you kill the boss. In the next area you engage a mini boss which has an interrupt and few area denials that you need to dodge but shortly after he runs away and you have to chase them in the next labyrinth. You do that by following ghosts, getting close to one of them reveals the next and so forth until you manage to reach a spy mob that you engage in combat. You need to kill 4 of these in order to proceed and their main mechanic is called the void rush. Short channel that targets several different players does a little bit of upfront damage and then leaves 5 second dots on them as well. Their other mechanic is a frontal, they're gonna cast this, disappear for a second, appear behind somebody else and then cast the frontal so you need to be quick to dodge it. After you kill it the next ghost appears and you keep chasing them around the area avoiding the sentries until you find the next two and murder them as well. Some of them you have to fight with additional mobs, they're pretty insignificant unless you get the webmancer, make sure to interrupt their cast as it is a heal. Next up is the second boss, two mob console fight, VX is going to throw knives at people leaving a nasty debuff that you have to heal through, while NX is going to cast a frontal that you need to dodge. After he casts the frontal he leaves a shade at that location and the next time he casts the frontal the shade also casts one. Keep dodging them until he casts Duskbringer. It detonates the shades and himself in huge circles that you need to get out of. It does heavy AoE damage to your whole party and then at the same time VX is casting the icicles. Daggers that put the spellable dots to everyone they pass through, which could be quite hard to heal when you combine them with the Disbringer damage. At this point they should be at 100 energy which concludes phase 1, they start dashing around the map, you just need to keep dodging them until phase 2 starts. In that phase there's no frontals but VX is going to cast Rhyme Dagger on your tank. That's a big circle around them that everybody needs to soak or they can just immune it if they can do so. Then there's a second rhyme dagger cast that is going to overlap with a dust bringer by NX. Another very huge healing check and if you survive all of that they're gonna start dashing around in transition phase as they're at 100% energy and go back to phase 1 starting the mechanic circle all over again until you manage to kill them. The next area has a lot of trash but the mobs there are quite insignificant apart from the web masters which have that heal that you still need to interrupt. However at the end there is a mini boss that is going to cast venomous spray. That puts a ticking poison on everybody in your party and a lot of green swirlies that you need to keep dodging on the ground. He also has a huge front though so plenty of movement to do here in order to dodge all of that. Once you get into the last building stay away from the X on the side as they summon caster mobs that you don't want to deal with. The big test subject mobs are going to cast Dark Barrage, a lot of swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge and they're going to follow up with Fierce Stomping which does damage to everybody standing close to them. The Surekia Naturalers are going to cast Void Wave, you want to interrupt those as they do AoE damage leave a dot on you and knock you back which could potentially trigger some of the X on the side. In the middle room awaits boss number 3 the Coglomation, Oozing Smash is the tank buster that also puts a debuff on them that reduces their healing taken. Vicious Darkness is a cast that is going to do AoE damage to everybody in your party and it's going to summon black orbs around the room that will start crawling towards the boss. You wanna soak all of them as if they succeed they heal the boss but soaking them drops puddles on the ground that do a bunch of damage and also put absorb healing shields on people that you need to heal through. He's gonna keep summoning orbs until he gets to 100% energy when he casts Dark Pools. It does heavy AoE damage to everyone for 6 seconds so that's a good point to use big cooldowns and defensives. After the Dark Pools is over the fight continues as before with him summoning more orbs. There is more trash before the last boss but it's the same mobs that we've seen before until you reach the room where there are two mini bosses. The Shade Weaver is going to cast Web Bolts, just interrupt those and stack up when he casts his next mechanic called Umber Wave. 
it roots everybody in place, doing ticking damage and it's much easier to cleave down the webs if you're stuck together. The second mini boss is going to cast Ravenous Swarm, 6 second dot doing damage to everyone in your party and his other ability is called Tremor Slam, this is a big circle around him, make sure you get out when he casts it, otherwise you're going to die. The last boss is Izo the Grand Splicer, at the start of the fight she's going to summon 3 orbs that are going to chase people around the room. Throughout the fight she's gonna keep casting Splice which does AoE damage to everybody in the party. Just heal through that and be careful for when the orbs start moving which is designated by blue swirlies on the ground. When she casts Umbra Wave it's the same webs that root you in place so stack near the boss and cleave them down as quickly as possible as shortly the orbs are gonna start moving and they can easily spank you in the butt. Her other mechanic is Tremor Slam, the same big circle that does damage inside so move out and that also summons adds that you need to cleave down. And you wanna do this quickly because if they melee somebody 5 times they explode and do AoE damage so using some CC on them is also quite welcome. At 100 energy she casts process of elimination which slams your tank with the 3 orbs very hard as well as everyone standing in the circle around them and if they survive the fight continues the same as before with her constantly casting splice and alternating between the tremor slam and the umbra wave. At the start the important mobs are the engorge crawlers which are going to do venomous spit at random person in your party which is a poison dot and it helps a lot if you have ways to dispel it. When they're about to die they explode in big green circles, make sure to stay out as they do damage and knock you back. Interrupt with priority the resonant barrage from the thrilling attendants as it does AoE damage and throw any spare interrupts into their web boats. The first area has 3 mini bosses that you need to kill in order to summon the first boss and all of them have a frontal and a bunch of web boats that you can keep interrupting. The first one Ixin has a special horrifying trio cast that you need to interrupt as this is an AoE fear. The second one Nakt has a short channel that does heavy AoE damage, it's called Call of the Brute and it's not interruptible so make sure to use defensives. And the last one Attic will leave poisonous clouds on the ground and cast poison bolts at people that you need to interrupt as they leave a poison dot on them as well. The first boss is called Avanox and he's going to cast Alerting Shrill which does heavy AoE damage for 3 seconds to everybody in your party and it summons small adds that fixate on people. You wanna keep these away from the boss because if they reach him he's gonna eat them and get a huge damage boost, so slow them down and AoE them from a distance. He's gonna follow up with Onslaught which is another 5 seconds of AoE to your group but this time there's also swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge, leaving puddles behind. Use your defensives here as your healer is going to be on the move having quite a hard time to keep everybody up. This also spawns a set of eggs and on the next alerting trio they're going to convert into adds and fixate on people so you can pre-move the boss away from them. There's one more mechanic, Voracious Bite which does a ton of damage to your tank and these mechanics keep alternating until you manage to kill the boss. The following area includes some web mages, make sure to interrupt their revolting volley as it does airway damage and send some spare interrupts to their web boats. The Hulking Bloodguards have an aura that reduces the damage taken by all the mobs around them so don't pull too many at the same time, be careful and don't get caught on their frontal and they're also going to do a massive slam that does AoE damage to everybody in your party. In this area there's also sentries that are going to channel alarm shrill. You need to make sure that you keep stunning them, seeing them and knocking them as you don't want this to go off, it will summon one of the big Hulking Bloodguards. The second boss is going to put infestation dots on random players, you need to spot heal them as it does a lot of damage. He also has a huge frontal and every time you heal somebody from the infestation they summon a small tornado that is going to move around the battlefield. He's also going to do a burrow to a player's location, this is basically a frontal, make sure you're not in the way. And at a 100% energy he's going to swarm the battlefield and leave only a small circle as the safe area where you can stand. This thing moves clockwise around the boss and you still have to dodge the tornadoes and the frontals while you're in sight. Having the tank standing on the right hand side and baiting the frontals there makes it a bit easier. The boss is also going to summon adds that are going to try and root people, make sure to interrupt their casts and cleave them down along with the boss. 
The last area has some blood overseers that are going to try to encast Venom Volley. Make sure to interrupt that as it does airway damage and avoid their enveloping web swirlies on the ground. The little drone ads in the area drop black blood puddles on the ground that you need to avoid. And there's also flying patrols that are going to dash to people and do random damage. Here you can go to the site and fight a whole bunch of overseers or go through the middle and fight a big hulking dude whose massive slam now also stuns everybody in your party, so choose your poison. And speaking of poison, the last boss Kikatao has plenty of that. First you have to constantly dodge swirlies on the ground and then when she casts cultivated poison everybody gets a dot which is a poison and you can dispel it which shoots out poison waves to the side that everybody else needs to dodge. During the fight small ads keep coming and once you kill them they drop black puddles on the ground. You need to walk on top of them when the boss cast cosmic singularity. They root you at place and prevent you from getting sucked into your death. After the cast is over you need to CC your root, stun, knock, anything works. But you need to do it quickly because the swirlies are coming and they're gonna kill you if you're still inside. Keep in mind that only one person can walk on top of the black puddle, you consume it once you do that, so everybody needs to find their own. The whole fight is repetitive dealing with the poison debuff and not getting sucked in with the cosmic singularity. If you succeed to do that, you've beaten Arakara, the city of echoes, and you're free to move to the next dungeon, the guide for which you can find on this YouTube channel, so make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you guys there, now get out of here.